Welcome to Fun with Data, in which I've combined two interests of mine, Python and astronomy. And we're going to use Python, Pandas, Matplotlib, and data from Space Rocks. So this has been heavily inspired by the Syntax YouTube channel by, I believe his name is Harrison Kingsley. He has tutorials on using Python, on programming Python, all the way from installing it to creating self-driving cars with Python in the game Grand Theft Auto V, which is really awesome. A couple of things that I'm explaining here, installing Python, for example, have been covered by him in great detail, but I'm going to cover them as well because I wanted to show you just how to get started quickly and have a little fun with Python. So we're going to install Python. We're going to install two libraries and we're going to download some data to work with and then we're going to have fun with Python. So downloading Python is easy enough. We just Google Python download and what do you know, one of the first links, I think the first link is going to be this page and then you download Python. Now there's some debate whether you should have Python 3 or 2. Uh, I would not be a good student of uh, Harrison Kingley's uh, channel if I would start using 2 now because it's going to be deprecated. Anyway, you can find ev everything about the gray debates on Syntax uh, video about that. I'm just going to use Python 3. Next, when you're going to install it, and I have installed it on Windows, and you want to use Python or pip from the command line, and I'm going to explain what Python is in a moment, you might want to think about checking this mark because it will allow you to run Python and pip without having to go to the directory where the executable is. Next, we're going to install the Python libraries, and this just couldn't be easier. Installing libraries for programming languages used to be a hassle, but for Python you have pip, so you can just do pip install the name of the library, and it installs the library. But not only that, it will also install the other dependencies. So if you need any other libraries to run this library, it will install that as well. It's really great. We're going to install two libraries. One is pandas. Pandas is a library for data analysis. The other one is matplotlib, and you can use this to create your graphs. So now we want to have some data. Now, what is my idea about this? Well, a couple of years ago, I followed a course called The Science of the Solar System by Professor Mike Brown. He is the discoverer of several Kuiper Belt objects and he predicted, together with Konstantin Batekin, a ninth planet in our solar system last year. He has a brilliant set of lectures on how the solar system formed and about Mars and uh, whether there's methane. It's uh, very scientific, um, but I like I liked that. In one of those lectures, there appear two graphs to show how there are several families in the asteroid belt. And we're going to recreate that because, well, I'm an astronomy geek. So on to the next thing. Where are we going to find that data? Well, this is very easy because there's an institute called the Minor Planet Center and they are the keepers of all orbital data. And there you just can download this file and this contains all the orbital data of all the asteroids discovered up to, well, yesterday basically because they updated it every day. Now this file is a little bit too big for my purposes here because when I try to put this file in a data frame, as we shall see soon, it will give memory errors. So there's probably a solution for it, but I have to learn that yet. So we're going to cheat a little bit, and I've created a subset of that data set, and it contains only the 10,000 first discovered asteroids. So you can download that from my GitHub page. Now let's write Python. So first of all, we have to import the libraries before we can use them in our code. So here you can see that I'm importing pandas and I'm using an alias called pd because I'm lazy. In the next line, I'm going to import the matplotlib pyplot function and I'm going to give that an alias. Um, but this is very understandable as typing matplotlib.pyplot every time is rather a hassle. Now it's time to read our data and I've placed my file on the D drive and as you can see, 
I've used double backslashes in my path name, the path name to where my file is. And that's because the first backslash will fall away and Python will not recognize where the data is. The way we're going to read this is with pandas very excellent read underscore JSON function. So you can read all this and we're going to put this in a variable called asteroid underscore df. Df stands for data frame. And already we can do something with this. For example, I can retrieve some statistics about this data by doing a describe on this data frame. So when I print the describe of this data frame, as you can see me doing here, I get this result. So what you can see is that I have statistics about, for example, the aphelion distance. Now for the non-astronomers around here, what is an aphelion distance? It's the furthest point of an asteroid in its orbit. But wait a minute. Okay, we can see that the mean aphelion distance of asteroids is 3.0848. But what unit? Well, let's look up in the documentation because the Minor Planet Center has documentations on their data files. So as you can see, it has information on the attribute, and the type and the description. So looking through this documentation, you will find that aphelion distance is measured in astronomical units. What is an astronomical unit? It is the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. So that's how we measure things in the solar system. Now, there's more data in that uh, output of this scribe. For example, we have this information. And this is the information I'm going to use for the graph. So what is this? We have an A, an E, and an I attribute. And this translates, according to the documentation, to the semi-major axis eccentricity and inclination. So what does that mean? Well, a quick explanation for all your non-gerbil space program engineers around here. The semi major axis is the sort of average distance from the sun in an elliptical orbit. The eccentricity tells you something about how round or elongated your orbit is. And the inclination tells you something about the angle of your orbit compared to the ecliptic plane of the solar system. So next we're going to plot this data and this couldn't be easier because we can just make a scatter plot with matplotlib like this. So the first argument will be the x-axis and we're going to put here the semi-major axis data and the second argument will be the inclination which will come out of the i attribute in our file and therefore and also data frame. So this on its own won't create a graph. We're going to do a little bit more to create it better. We're going to give it an X label, a Y label, and a title, as professional graphs do have. And then we're going to use the plt.show command to show the graph. And you run this, and it's only eight lines of code. And sure enough, here's a graph of all the uh, first 10,000 asteroids discovered in a graph of semi major axis versus inclination. Well, after the initial excitement, you will find that there are a couple of things that have some room for improvement. For example, the dots in our graph, they're rather big and they create these large, large clumps of blue. Also, we would like to zoom in on the main asteroid belt, not all the stuff outside the orbits of Saturn, for example. So, we could do that with this button, but I'd rather see a Python program that does this all in one go. So we're going to change our code a little bit. The scatter command will now define the color of our marker and we choose black. And you say, how does K stand for black? Well, the B for blue was already taken. The marker is going to be a dot. You can also choose axis and O's, uh, but we're going to choose dot and the S stands for size and we're going to choose a small size. Now zooming in on the X axis is a question of limiting it. So here we limit the X axis between two astronomical units and 3.5 astronomical units. And while we're at it, we might as well limit the Y axis a little bit so we can just show the largest population of asteroids. And when you run this, sure enough, there we are. This is the graph that I've more or less seen in Professor Brown's lecture about asteroids. Now, if we want the semi-major axis against the 
eccentricity, that's just a question of changing the attribute name in the scatter command. And of course, we want to have a matching Y label. And there we are, there's that graph. So it's uh, really easy. Now, why do astronomers like this graph? Well, you can clearly see that there are different populations, families of asteroids that you can distinguish in this graph. So that's why they make this. You can also see some gaps, for example, at uh, 2.5 astronomical units and 2.82 astronomical units. These are uh, so-called resonances. These are places where if you would orbit there, Jupiter would pick you up by tugging on you and you would uh, either crash on Jupiter or leave the solar system because of the gravity pull that, that Jupiter does. So how to go on from here? Well, first of all, I want not just the first 10,000 asteroids, but I want all the asteroids. So that's something I want to do in the future. Also, I followed the machine learning course a while back. And while Harrison Kingsley uses a machine learning to predict stock markets, I can't think of anything you could predict except with orbital mechanics based on uh, this data. But what you could maybe do is do categorization based on this data. It's the same, use the same algorithms that, for example, Amazon uses to categorize you as a specific type of customer. So that would be interesting to try at least. So that's something else for the future. Now don't expect any scientific articles from me soon on this topic, but the funny thing was that last night when I prepared this video, this article just appeared on astronomers identifying new astronomy families based on asteroid data. And while I could not read the article because it was behind a stupid paywall, I, I would really like to see the graphs that I used in this paper just to see if there's anything that I could replicate. So um, the interesting thing about this was they discovered, they, they identified a couple of asteroids that are really, really old, 4 billion years old, very soon after the formation of the solar system. So that's all for me about asteroid data and Python and pandas. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Marcion Krijgsman. I have a blog about data, usually about Hadoop, but can be about other things. I'm on Twitter, and if you need a data engineer, well, let us know. Thank you for watching.